Hi, Samir, and this is another effects introduction video. And this one is for creating fire. It's just the basics, how to create fire, what is necessary to accomplish a fire setup. And let's get started right away. Um, we need to create a gas setup because fire is actually a gaseous phenomena. And so we create a gas setup and we get the gas renderer as usual which was uh, uh, defining the output um, and which is put on the environment object here. And we of course get the gas solver, which calculates all the uh, fluid simulation stuff. And we also have an emitter by default, which we can see here, I move it down. Um, but okay, if I play a simulation now, we, we know that by default it creates a smoke setup. So as we want fire, and what we need to do is we go into the solver in its object tab and uh, change the solver type from smoke uh -huh, uh, to fire. We could also use combustion fire. This is a more complex algorithm, but we stay simple here and choose the fire mode. All right, I'm gonna now play a simulation. Ah, still no fire. All right, so, but uh, the reason for this is and I just want to point out now first uh, what fire actually is. So fire is actually an effect that happens when enough temperature is available and the temperature is high enough to uh, illuminate, I put it like this, illuminate the smoke or soot particles so they start to glow. And uh, this is what we depict as fire or as the flames of the fire. Uh, well, all right, so what we need actually is uh, we need the temperature. So I go into the emitter, into the emission tab, and into the temperature sub tab. And I can see now that we have 800 Kelvin here set, but uh, it is to be pointed out that we have 800 Kelvin per second. Um, so the rate is per second, and as I have 30 frames per second in my scene. Let's just see how much we get per frame. We only have 27 Kelvin per frame emitted into our container by the emitter. So, well, uh, I say um, fire requires uh, a certain uh, temperature to be visible. And um, this threshold value, I call it like that, when flames become visible is set here in the solver again it's a global thing so it is in the solver everything that is global is in the solver everything locally uh, defined or specified is in the emitter and uh, we go into the media tab here we have we have all the media that we uh, use in our simulation for our fire simulation and we can set here now in the temperature because we are emitting temperature from the emitter uh, set some global uh, stuff and we also have here um, the maximum temperature right uh, which we set to 5000 Kelvin it's pretty high maybe 2000 Kelvin might be appropriate but 5000 is also very much okay so the default values are right um, we can set the cooling of the fire later on but okay let's just go on to the uh, important stuff and we had that threshold value when flames become visible. So we open up the fire tap um, and we have here the ignition temperature. And that's actually um, the value, that threshold value I was talking about. So currently we have set 800 Kelvin. So our emitter needs to uh, generate at least 800 Kelvin to make the fire visible, to ignite the fire, create flames. Um, I can turn this down now. You know, as far as I know, uh, the flames uh, flames become visible at a range of, I don't know, 450 Kelvin, something about that. That's the lowest thing I know of, the lowest temperature I know of when flames become visible. All right, so I set it to, let's say 500, which should be perfectly fine. Uh, and to stay physically accurate, right? So if I set it to 100 Kelvin, that doesn't make really sense because 
a real flame wouldn't be visible at uh, 100 Kelvin temperature. All right, but we have 500 Kelvin, so I go into the emitter now, and I uh, set 500 Kelvin, and what I do now, because this is still per second, I set the rate per frame. I activate that one, and now uh, the emitter will uh, generate 500 Kelvin per frame, right? All right, um, and the last thing I do now is I turn on the fire rendering here in my shader settings, right? Like this. And I can now see the fire here. You know, that's uh, because we have generated enough temperature. And when I turn off the rate per frame, it disappears again because, as you know, we then only generate 16 uh, Kelvin per frame which we don't want, we want the fire to start right away. So, rate per frame, and when I now play the simulation, we can also see the fire evolving now. Uh, it's not a very interesting fire, I must admit. Um, well, but uh, that's actually all you need to do to uh, create uh, visible fire. And we can now start uh, playing with some settings just to make this more interesting, of course. Uh, first of all, I could um, increase the temperature and uh, use a noise here. For example, let's say 50. And just, I don't know, use fire. Might be appropriate. I uh, also set an animation so it is moving uh, while it is emitting. Like this. Uh, we have a pretty low resolution here, so I simply create a bigger uh, emitter. And you can also see this gets a more fiery shape now. And it also generates smoke here. I haven't turned it off in the emitter, so it's also generating smoke by the emitter. And, well, that's actually... Uh, how it is done and uh, I could also make a rendering now and we can see um, how it looks like here I could change some things now um, for example first of all oh yeah not a bad idea is set the render advection here I set it to 0 0.033 which is actually one frame uh, time step um, so, which actually means one second and 30 frames we have. So I get this value. So it's actually advecting one more frame. And when I now render this, uh, we get a more defined shape here. Just change this again so you can see the difference. And I could also set this even higher and get a more defined fire shape here. So, pretty useful setting uh, that we could use. And of course, you have all the options now to change the color of the fire. For example, we have a local density based uh, color here. Um, when I change that to this value, we'll see we get more yellowish color. So that's how you could uh, define the color. Uh, we could also use a physical based uh, coloring so it takes the temperature here and um, assigns uh, the temperature the physical accurate uh, color that would appear in real life right um, like this and as we have a pretty 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 low uh, temperature here um, we get a pretty reddish uh, color I could also change uh, some of the settings. Some, for example, I set a different tone mapping, so it generates a different type as if it was seen on an NTSC system. So uh, we get a more color like this. And uh, to, in order to style the coloration here, which is also uh, like awkward here, I don't know why this happens, but <laughs> um, we can change now simply the temperature here. Um, and therefore uh, affect 
what color is assigned to the fire, right? Uh, I could also furthermore style here the physical gradient like this and uh, also get uh, some different coloration. Um, so it's pretty easy and quickly to uh, style your thing. And um, well, the visibility is actually now set on the burn density here. Uh, this is, you can imagine it like a lifetime. So it kind of depends on the age of the fire currently. We could also change that to use the temperature field directly, which would be much more physical than uh, the lifetime. Because as I told you at in the beginning, fire is actually uh, seen when a certain temperature is uh, reached and so if we base the visibility on the temperature that would on only be logical but I have to say it is a little bit more uh, a little harder to um, control than by using the burn so the age of the fire of course that's a much more simpler um, way of thinking of fire well fire starts to live and then dies off at a point in time so this is probably a more artistic way of uh, using uh, the visibility here. That's why it is set by default, because we know we all are artists in the end. But if you want uh, a true and a good um, uh, visibility uh, behavior, you would, of course, use the temperature, right? Um, and we can now stay, style the visibility here uh, independently from the coloring that we have from the temperature here, right? And change here um, the threshold when it is, becomes visible and we can already see here in the preview um, what happens. So you can see it is much more different um, in visibility when we use the temperature channel uh, in the burn density sub tap as if we were using the lifetime the burn right so uh, you should choose what you want to to use uh, right from the beginning but I tend to use uh, a lot of time to temperature now because once you get used to it uh, you really see the benefits of being uh, physically based um, uh, having a physically based visibility over a more artistically one but it really depends on the case so there is no this is right or this is wrong just choose the one you uh, like to work with and which one give you the results you're looking for um, well it's your choice but you have the choice and we have also the optical properties here of the fire so uh, how the fire is actually rendered and how the color is applied, etc. Currently, it's set to the artistic type, which is again uh, just a little easier to handle. It is more straightforward, uh, but uh, actually, I never, I never use it um, only for preview purposes. But when I do my final renderings, I set it to the physical type, um, which is a much more appropriate uh, algorithm I use there. And you can already see in the preview that there is a huge difference. Uh, in execution or in the output we get a much more denser feeling of a flame here um, and we can set the absorption of the fire and uh, well you can see uh, it gets more gets the more denser look uh, of when um, when smoke is for example available and um, for also here I would like to point out that uh, if you would like to go the physical way, uh, currently it's set to burn and burn here the channels which are used to calculate the absorption and the luminance. Um, here in the channel uh, burn would still be appropriate because we are using the temperature here now. If I would use, would use burn uh, like this, I would probably set this to temperature simply to base the the luminance of the flames also on the temperature which is actually the case in the real world so but as we have already the burn set to temperature I can also keep this at burn right 
Um, otherwise, if I would uh, set it to temperature, it would use the temperature density here. But I would like the to link the visibility to the luminance so um, I set it to burn and the absorption is also set to burn but actually the physical way would be to set it to smoke why is that because as I told you in the beginning and also later on uh, the flames we perceive are actually the smoke particles or the soot particles that are glowing because of the temperature so what is actually absorbing is are the soot particles or the smoke so i can simply set it to smoke and get a, a better behavior a, a absorption behavior than with the burn field as we can see here right and this was uh, this also allows us to style our flames now from this point on um by actually uh, using more or less smoke so we can uh, kind of interact let the smoke and the fire interact more complexly uh, with each other and therefore get a more realistic result in our output right all right so um that's actually it so this gives you all the opportunity to create a pretty quickly uh some uh, fire scenarios um, different styles of flames um, and all this with these settings right so just feel free to um, play with these settings and um, try different combinations it all gives you uh, different types of outputs and it is really worth it probably not take too much time styling your simulation because uh, I see it like this, you know, uh, you can use the simulation as the ground truth, right? And uh, the motion details, etc., are, of course, based on the simulation. But to give it a final touch or really uh, style the output, mm, rather take a little more time playing with the settings in your renderer, in the, ga in the gas renderer, in the shader and instead of um, playing too much with the simulation it's like having a sphere in cinema 4d i mean you wouldn't expect a sphere a simple sphere without any material to look good no matter if you use gi or any kind of super stylish um, render options they won't give you anything because there is no material on it you know the ma material gives uh, really gives you uh, or styles the impression that the uh, viewer is seeing, right? So it's the very much the same in a fluid simulation and especially for fire engages uh, media. You know, play with the shader, don't underestimate it, take some more time and um, well, I guess these are enough information for one small tutorial, but um, that's, I just actually wanted to make this a little more complex and just to show you maybe what is coming up in, in the commercial uh, DVD that will be released this year, right? Um, but that should be it for now concerning the fire rendering. I hope this is helpful in getting you started and dip it effects 1.5.